Hey there ladies and gents, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Drew and this is Cetraline Hydrochloride. A big intimidating name for a little blue pill that does a lot of good. So if you've never heard the name Cetraline Hydrochloride before, you may have heard its more common name or prescribed name and that is Zoloft. Zoloft is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor or SSRI and it's a medication that I've been taking for the past three months now. So you can probably guess by the title of this video and the intro that we just got finished with that I spoke no more than 30 seconds ago, we're going to be talking about something of a controversial topic in the field of mental health, and that is mental health medication. Now, why is it so controversial? Well, because there seems to be this kind of stigma around mental health medication, and really when you understand where that stigma comes from, it's somewhat justified, but you'll realize that the stigma behind it is kind of dumbfounded. So it's justifiable in that it doesn't make any sense, and once you do make sense of it, it really doesn't make much sense. Does that make sense? I said a lot of senses just now. But where does this stigma around mental health medication come from? Well, a long, long time ago, and by that I mean the last 100 to 150 years or so, the kind of cutting edge way to fix a lot of mental health issues like anxiety, depression, PTSD, was literally lobotomy. They will cut out a part of your brain, the idea being that if you remove the gray matter that is causing anxiety, causing depression, all that sort of thing, then it'll just as easily be taken out of the brain and then your problems will go away because that gray matter is gone. Needless to say, with a fair bit of medical hindsight, that is not the way to go about things. And sadly, a lot of people died, and a lot of people were left mentally incapacitated, a lot of people were left mentally retarded or without their mental facilities, and it took all those people having unfortunate things happen to them for the medical community to finally say, yeah, we probably shouldn't be cutting out pe parts of people's brain to fix something that can be easily fixed with some therapy or with other medication or just a simple rebalancing of chemicals in the brain. So that happened in the late 70s, 80s, and 90s. There was a lot of development around pharmaceuticals and drugs that could actually help with mental health issues, and that's where you get a lot of the drugs that you see nowadays, like Zoloft, Xanax, and some of the other ones that I can't name off the top of my head right now, but those all came out of a kind of pivot from, hey, let's literally cut a part of your brain out to let's find something that can help keep the brain intact for one, but two, maybe look at rebalancing the chemicals that cause mood regulation and things like that, like serotonin and cortisol, that sort of thing. And so thankfully that happened, but a lot of people were still left with a sour taste in their mouth because they thought that any sort of health treatment or any sort of clinical treatment for mental health involves getting a piece of your brain cut out or becoming mentally incapacitated or a burden on society. But that's excrement. We know that now, that that is complete and total excrement. And this is where I get into the point where I say, if a person is well-being or well-meaning and they just don't understand the benefits of mental health medication, that's usually where they get stuck in the stigma. But once you demystify it and you kind of explain it, you create an educational opportunity out of it, a lot of those people will be converted and they say, oh, that makes sense, or yeah, I don't know why I was ever revert to this sort of thing. So. Usually the people that are avert to mental health medication have never had to suffer with anxiety and depression on the level that you do. They've never had to sit and be inside their head all day worrying about being a horrible person or not being able to get out of bed because they don't know why, they're just sad and they can't get out of bed. They don't have to suffer in the way that you have suffered. And to be quite frank, if you are dealing with those sort of things and there's this pill that will help you literally rebalance the chemicals in your brain because they're in disbalance and that's a medically proven fact, then why wouldn't you take the pill? Why would you subject yourself to these sort of things because somebody tells you to tough it out or just go to therapy or everybody's sad? No, everybody's sad, but some people aren't nearly as sad as you are at some points or people aren't nearly as anxious as you are at some points. So. It's not about them, it's not about their opinions, it's not about their broken notions of mental health medication. It's about you. What is going to help you become a better person? What is going to help you keep from having to sit in your bed all day? What is going to keep you from having to stay up all night crying because you feel like you're going to do something horrible or something inevitably is going to happen and you have no control over it? When you do, you just need the chemicals rebalanced in your brain to do so. So. 
that's me getting off my soapbox for a little bit about the topic of people who are averse to medical health medication, so or mental health medication, I should say. So I'm not here to tell you if you should or should not go on medication. That's a decision left to you and your doctor. But chances are, if you came upon this video, you're either on medication or considering it. And all I can say is talk to your doctor or psychiatrist. There are so many medications now that are on the open market and able to be prescribed for a plethora of different things because they're generic or they've passed their patent point. I know Zoloft was uh, patented in the, I think the late 80s, so now its patent has expired, and so now it can be prescribed generically for a tenth of the cost of what Zoloft originally was. These drugs are cheap in most cases, and they can usually be paid for with pennies on the dollar, and if not, then there are programs in place like GoodRx in the United States that can help you to pay for your prescriptions and get you the medication that you need to live a happy life. So. If you need help, if you feel like the therapy's not working, if you feel like you just need a little bit of an extra boost or something to help out, then there's no reason you shouldn't go on medication. Because again, it's about you. What's gonna get you better? If it's gonna be medication with therapy, that's fine. If it's just therapy, that's fine too. But you owe it to yourself to make a call or schedule an appointment, go and talk with somebody about it and get on medication if you need it because inevitably that will help you along your journey and probably give you a better chance of surviving this horrible, horrible thing that seems to be going on in your head, but I promise you will come to pass in time. To wrap things up with some perspective, uh, we have moved past the archaic and frankly inhumane treatment options for mental health recovery and mental health conditions. So built on that, or to make good of the sacrifice of our predecessors and all those people that had horrible things happen to them, we owe it to ourselves to kind of take a look at the mental health medication field and the mental, mental health medication picture and really consider how we can make it better and how it can improve our lives and evaluate it objectively versus with this stigma that came from bad practice of medicine so many years ago. Maybe one day we won't need a pill. In fact, maybe one day we'll look back and say, man, I was on this pill for a while and I had to go to therapy for what seems like forever, as my counselor Matt puts it. And it just seems so archaic in hindsight. Maybe just one day we'll have a cure, a miracle cure, and nobody will have to suffer with anxiety or depression like you and I are working through right now. But for now, if it makes you feel better, if this pill is going to help you live a better life, then go for it. There should be no stigma, and as long as you are doing it within supervision, you follow your doctor's orders to the T, and they see you regularly, then this can easily be something that can help you along your mental health journey and inevitably help you to a better and happier life. So take your pill and be happy. So that'll wrap it up for today, ladies and gents, and I will end in the traditional way, and that is by me saying, always remember that you are wanted, you are loved, and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You. Hey there ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you giving me a little bit of time out of your day. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, leave a thumbs down. I learn just as much from the dislikes as I do from the likes. And if you want to continue the conversation, leave a comment down below. You can talk about just about anything from cat videos on to computer science questions or whatever is weighing on your mind. And if you want to follow me on social media, I've got links to my various social medias. I would love it if we could connect on those platforms and you can keep track of me and what I've been up to outside of the YouTube realm and possibly get a sneak peek into projects that I'm working on before they air here on YouTube. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video again, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take it easy.